It was an historic election night and some historic results. Here's where things stand tonight. Democrats swept the top of the ticket. Gretchen Whitmer, Jocelyn Benson, and Dana Nessel all won their re-election bids. All three proposals in our state also got voter approval. That means term limits and voting rules will be changing in Michigan. Abortion will also be enshrined in the state constitution. Two years after a loss, Hillary Skolton came back with a historic win in Michigan's third congressional district. She'll be the first woman to represent Grand Rapids in Congress. And a shift in power in Lansing is coming. For the first time in four decades, it appears that Democrats could have majorities in the State House and Senate. We do have team coverage tonight. Target 8 investigator Ken Colker and political reporter Rick Alvin are covering that shift in power. We do start with Ken, who talked to lawmakers that won last night. Ken? Brian and Sue, today Democrats in West Michigan and across the state were celebrating a shift in power that has not happened in a generation. It is a new day in Michigan. It is absolutely thrilling. Those cheers in the background were for Hillary Skolton as she arrived for her victory speech today in Grand Rapids. Skolton will become the first Democrat to represent Grand Rapids in the U.S. Congress since 1977. And next year will be the first time since 1984 that Dems will control the governor's office and the state house and senate. It has been four decades since we have had a trifecta in Michigan of Democratic uh, uh, support up and down uh, the chambers and in the executive office. This is a thrilling moment for us and, and an enormous moment. Democratic State Senator Winnie Briggs, who easily won re-election, hopes to be named Senate Majority Leader as soon as tomorrow. It's a seismic shift in politics in Michigan. And what is that going to mean? So, uh, you know, I think what you'll see is a lot less contentious um, processes here. We'll see a legislature that's eager to work with our governor. The state is ready for us to move in a different direction. Gretchen Whitmer has been leading the way. We will have a legislator that is ready to work with her. On things she says like the economy, education and jobs. And we'll also see just an aff affirmation of those fundamental rights. So, uh, you know, being an, uh, an equality-minded state where LGBTQ people are welcome, being a state where um, your fundamental reproductive rights are affirmed. Well, I think what it means is that the priorities of Michiganders were heard yesterday at the ballot box. Um, Fitzgerald, the first Democrat to represent the city of Wyoming in the House in nearly 40 years, says he looks forward to working closely with the governor. Does it also mean no excuses? No, no, nobody to get in her way. I think that what it means is that we can work together in a very smart way. Yes, we have a razor thin margin in the House, but I think what it means is that we can work together in that, in that collaborative manner uh, to put Michiganders first. On the other side of the aisle, Senator Mark Heisiger will become part of the minority party. He says he expects the governor will still need help from his party. Is there also like, okay, no excuses, got well, nobody blocking the way. Sure, but you also have to remember the margin is pretty tight. So um, maybe they're going to have a Democrat that won't agree with them, and maybe they need to pick up a Republican. It's Ken Colker, News 8. A lot happened last night. Now we want to bring in political reporter Rick Elvin. And, you know, we've talked about uh, a chance for that Democratic or the dramatic shift in power right. with that redistricting. So tell us what materialized last night because there was uh, so much going on. Yeah, it was, and it was hard because we couldn't get the numbers quickly enough to see how that was happening. You could feel it a little bit, but we couldn't see it. But let me show you what it means, where we were and where we are. Uh, currently, right now, in uh, the State House, you can see the division of power there. It's 57 uh, to 53. And after everything is said and done, we think it's going to be 56-54. So that's where the ch shift came. So the Republicans uh, go down three, Democrats pick up three, and that's where you have a new um, Democratic Speaker of the House. We expect that uh, to happen tomorrow. Uh, and if you look at the Senate, same kind of thing. It was 22 uh, members of the Republican Party in the Senate and 16 members uh, uh, that were Democrats. And now it will be 20 Democrats and 18 members in the Republican Party. So both places will have thin margins, but it's enough. It's enough to hold the gavel. And that means the gavel for 
all of the committee chairmanships, including appropriations and all those important uh, places uh, where, where you want your party in power. And it also means that Democrats will set the agenda and they will set the agenda along with the governor of their own party. So just think back 2010, Rick Snyder, Republican Senate, Republican House. Now it's Gretchen Whitmer, Democratic governor, Democratic House, Democratic Senate. That's What's the agenda? What's well, on the tap? I, you know, a lot of things come to mind. One of the things I mentioned earlier in the day is that one of the, the issues for the governor has always been to fix the roads. We know that the federal government uh, passed a big infrastructure plan, and some of that money will be coming to Michigan, but it's not enough for ongoing road maintenance because that just never ends. Now, the governor proposed early on in her first term uh, a raise in the gas tax, and it was a non-starter with Republicans. I'm not suggesting they're going to come back with that idea because a gas tax now is probably a diminishing revenue source given the rise of electric vehicles over the next, what we expect it to be over the next few years. But a revenue source is going to be needed. So I think one of the things they'll look at early on is what can they do to create, create a source of revenue so those road repairs are ongoing. There are things that Democrats have talked about for a long time, like expanding the Elliott Larson Civil Rights Bill to include uh, more and more communities. That I think that's one of the things that they may, may look at. Um, maybe right to work comes up at some point. Who knows? These are all things that Democrats have talked about. Uh, and we'll just see. And I think that agenda is going to have to be formulated uh, with the new Senate majority, the new House majority, and the governor. They're going to have to sit down and talk and get on the same page. Because uh, I think they'll want to do some things pretty quickly out of the gate in January. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Rick, thank you.